An income statement is a record of all the incomes and the expenses that the business makes within a financial period. So it's very self-explanatory. So hi guys, my name is Zama Fortunate Mdambo. With that said, this session will be all about the theory and the structure of the income statement and then we'll do some examples. So let's get started. So income statement, as I've already said, is very self, explains itself. It's about income and it's about expenses. And the business, the main aim is to see if they're making a profit or a loss. And it's one of my favorites because you already know that you're just adding and subtracting. It's not a lot of complications, just a few adjustments here and there. So with that said, we're going to start by identifying what an expense is. So we know that an expense increases on the debit side. We know that an expense means money is going to come out of the business and so it costs us and so we want to minimize expenses as much as possible and we know that an income means money is coming in and we are gaining something right so in the income statement um the structure is can change a lot but things that remain the same it's always going to be sales minus cost of sales which will give you a gross profit after your gross profit you have your other income then you have your operating expenses and that will give you a net profit and then there's certain calculation that you do after a net profit for example you're going to take out your finance costs which are things like your interest from loan you're going to add your interest income from the investments that you've made as a business and then you're going to take out the income tax so if we analyze things line by line that come into the income statement anything that goes under sales or revenue is has has to do only with the operations of the business so what do i mean when i say this i mean for example if we are a business that sells cell phones for example and we sell cell phones as our main source of income as the business any sale that we make of a cell phone would go into sales but let's say for example sometimes we do um we have equipment that we use in the business and then we sell that equipment. You can't take the profit that you got from selling that equipment and put it under sales because it's not part of our main activity as the business. So you would rather take that money and put it under other income. Ne? So sales is just anything that has to do with the main activities of the business. And under sales, you would put in sales that you sold for cash and some businesses do sell on credit you would also put in those creditors under sales so we want the totality of all the sales that happened within the period then we move on to cost of sales cost of sales is basically how much it cost us to purchase those particular items in order for us to make a sale so things that would fall under cost of sales would be the cost of the good itself the cost of the transportation to make sure the good is where it's supposed to be and in very very rare cases sometimes you find that you need maybe an engineer to confirm that your work is good before you guys can sell it that would fall under cost of sales right and that would give you a gross profit and in other times in your question paper you find that they will give you a markup like they'll say that it's 25% on cost or 25% on sales and that's what we use to calculate our gross profit. This becomes much more clearer, clearer when we do our example because you can clearly see what I'm talking about and you're able to look at the calculation and see what I mean when I'm talking about a markup, right? So that would be the very first portion of your income statement. That's where your easy marks are. So also, before I forget, under sales, sometimes you get things called sales returns, right? And this, is mean, this just means a customer was not satisfied with a good or you guys didn't sell something that's up to date and someone brought it back. So we need to account for that and subtract it from our sales as a sales return so that we don't end up overstating how much we actually made within the financial period. So that would be your first section. That's where usually you'll get like three to four marks. So it's very easy marks from there. Then we move down into other income. So last I'd given you an example saying other income would be if you sold something 
and you made a profit from it. This is just extra money that the business makes that's coming from the side. It has nothing to do with the daily activities of the business. But with that said, other income, it's easier to say it's everything else excluding the activities of the business and excluding any interest income. So as long as it's not interest income and it's not the sales of the products of the business, then you would put it under other income. And you would add that to your gross profit and so you would get the totality of how much money has flowed into the business within the current financial period. Next would be your operating expenses. Operating expenses, I can't really go into line by line because they vary from marketing to administration costs to all sorts of things. Basically anything that you can think of that's a cost would fall under operating expenses and we will add all that and most of the time that's where your insurance, your rent expense, things like that, the adjustments would fall into. And after that, you'd have your net profit. So what's really important with um, the income statement is most of the time, they like to do adjustments. And these adjustments are adjustments to test if you understand what it means if something falls within or outside the reporting period. So here's an example. If your reporting period starts on the 1st of January and ends in December, right that means if it's 2020 now so anything that would be between january and december 2020 we would add it to our income statement and anything that is on the 1st of january 2021 or on the on or in december 2019 we would subtract it so that's what you need to know that anything that falls within our period we add it anything that falls outside our period we subtract it that's how your adjustment works because that's where you get things like income received in advance prepaid expense accrued expense accrued income those are the normal adjustments that you'd come across when you're doing your income statement so your income received in advance right is money that someone has given you before they've actually received the services so what would you do with that you would subtract it from your current reporting period because what it's not your money yet we haven't used that service yet so it needs to be subtracted same goes for a prepaid expense if we pay for something in advance and we still have not used that service yet we would also subtract it from our income statement why because we didn't actually pay that much for that service in that particular period right and if you are supposed to get money for example if you're a landlord and you're supposed to get rent money from a tenant but the tenant hasn't paid for december yet you would add that money and pretend like the tenant has already paid because we must treat everything in the income statement as if everything is working according to order so if you were supposed to receive money you would add it even though you haven't received it yet and if you were supposed to pay for something you would act as if you've already paid for that particular item even though you haven't paid for it yet in essence that's all the adjustments are testing they're really just trying to see if you know what falls into the current financial period and what doesn't and they want to see if you can differentiate between a prepaid expense and an accrued expense and then you would do your income taxes. We all know that income tax is always at 28%. It will never change. That's just how it is for companies. So you would take 28% of the profit that you've made in that year as a company. And in essence, when you guys deal with income tax, when it comes to income statements, what they're trying to see is if you're able to see how the calculation works. So just like as you guys saw in the balance sheet, and this is how they're linked. In the balance sheet, you have a section where your income from income tax from SARS falls under current liabilities. And in this situation, it's because we have paid less we have paid SARS less than what we owe them. So in the income statement, you would pretend as if you've paid in full, but the portion that is left, you would account for it as an accrued expense because it's something that you are supposed to pay in the current financial period, but you did not pay for it. So with income tax, that's what they're testing to see if you know the difference between you've overpaid SARS or underpaid SARS and whether a payment falls within the current financial period or not. And afterwards, you would do your interest. 
with interest expense and interest income sometimes they do try to trick you by giving you monthly installments and you just need to remember to annualize those things and make sure that it's the yearly amount so that you can account for it in your income statement sometimes you make investments and investments pay out certain interest even if you haven't gotten that interest yet we will still add it to our income statement and even if we haven't paid the interest for our loans we would still subtract it from our income statement because we are trying to be as accurate as possible so when you look at an income statement you must look at it from perspective of you pretend you're in a perfect business world. You pretend everybody pays on time and you pay all your things on time. And that's the only thing that's being tested. So as long as you know what's an income and you know what's an expense, and if you know it falls within the current financial period or if it falls outside the current financial period, you should be good. Okay, guys, we have come to the end of our session. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It has been a good one. Again, do not hesitate to ask questions in the comment section. Like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you really understood. I am Zamam Tambo. It's been a good one.